Good evening, everyone. We hope you all are well. Thank you for joining us tonight. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this time that we can spend in your presence mm -hmm. and we can meditate on your word. Help us that even as we converse and we dialogue around your word and uh, around the issues that we speak about in our modern day context, that you will enlighten us, that you will bring to, uh, to remembrance your word to us, that you will also help us, your Holy Spirit will guide us mm. and instruct us in the right questions yes, to ask yes. and how to converse, how to dialogue with one another. Your word says that iron sharpens iron, so help us to sharpen one another in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, good evening, guys. Thank you for joining tonight. Um, so I'm just going to continue from where we last uh, uh, left off. Uh, we spoke last about the set man test and recognizing whether you are a set man or whether you are a follower. So tonight, we want to talk about the voice test. And there are so many voices that we hear on a daily basis. And sometimes it's not actually a voice from an individual. Sometimes it's a, the voice of your in, the institution that you attend, uh, a denomination, um, an, uh, a way of thinking imparted to you by your peers, by your mm. colleagues. And those are all considered voices. Sometimes it's something that you've read, mm. um, something that you've watched, a YouTube video, something that you've seen on Instagram, uh, TikTok, and all these different, these are all the voices that we are faced with, or I should rather say bombarded with on a daily basis. And I mean, previously, uh, when I mean previously, I mean like 40 years ago, 50 years ago, the the main voice that people would hear was the newspaper yeah, and or the radio. Uh, they would, you know, tune into the right frequency and they would pick up different things. And now we have so many voices because social media is... Uh, vast and there's so many different things um, different channels that we can tune into and then obviously we have a, a lot of people that we associate with have different opinions nowadays where previously people were not as opinionated mm. people were very structured and very contained in uh, old mindsets and old ways of thinking but today everyone has their own opinion so would that in the back of your mind, I want you to start formulating questions in your mind and comments and approach the session as that. Approach it from the beginning as uh, as we are speaking to you, think about, okay, what can I say? What can I contribute to the discussion? Because sometimes even the little seed thought that you think is insignificant to you has great impartation to somebody else on the chat. <laughs> So there are many voices seeking to gain our attention today. And if you want to move into your position, if we want to move into our position as mighty men of valor, like Gideon, the issue of gullibility needs to be dealt with. Most people accept every voice and every supernatural voice as the voice of God. Mm. And that is because they are unskilled in discernment. They don't understand whether, you know, is every voice that is coming to me, is it all of the voice? all of the uh, voice, uh, voice of God. Mm. So Gideon used the fleece. Uh, if you go back to the original scripture, Gideon used the, the fleece or wool because he did not want anyone to pull the wool over his eyes, essentially. So he wanted to test what the angel had said, as you have said. He wanted some way to test the voice. He wanted to be led by the dew. And if the dew was on the fleece only, then he knew it was the voice of God. So if the Jew was on the ground only the next day, then this would be convincing evidence to him that God had obviously spoken. So he discerned the Jew by the water. And I'm reminding you at this time of the sons of Issachar who had the spirit of discernment, which mm. is what we should all basically strive for. Now the Jew from heaven is, we all know, a symbol of the Holy Spirit and water is a symbol of the word of God consistently. To Gideon, the Jew and the water were one. So th this is showing us that we must be led by the spirit, the Jew, the word of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are sons of God. The spirit, which is the voice, the Jew, and the word, which is water, must agree. 
1 John 5, 7, for there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit, yes. and these three are one. Now, how do we know, after reading that mouthful, you know, how do we know that the voice that we are hearing is the voice of God? Listen, we are not saying social media is a bad thing. It's a place where only the devil exists. Sometimes you can hear something or read something on social media that will convict you in your life, in the manner in which you serve God. And sometimes the voice of God is present in these things. Yes. Because sometimes there's a pastor on the other side or there's a son of God, I should rather say. Yes. There's a son of God on the other side you know, making this TikTok video where they are preaching or whether they are teaching you something, you know, in a quick, uh, in a in a quick um, 30, second clip. 30 second clip. Yeah. Mm. And they could be saying something that would perk your attention. And then you realize, hey, you know, I never think about this in this way. Let me go search the scriptures for this. I mean, that's happened to me a lot of times. So I think the better way to say, uh, to, 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 to say this is that, you must decide for yourself who you want to follow on social media and what voice you want to listen to on social media. Now, that is the difference because you have that power in your hand. You do not have to watch every single thing. YouTube is a good example. YouTube, you can find pornography. You can find, um, uh, I'm, not, I'm not even sure, but there's so many things. But then you can also find godly things on YouTube. Yes. So that's just an example. You get to choose what voice you want to listen to on what platform you listening to. So I think from the onset, we have to, to discern that social media is not a curse. It's not uh, evil. It is not of the devil. It is an invention by someone who was godly uh, to basically, or even if it wasn't invented by someone who was godly, we can use it for a godly purpose. Yes, That's the main thing. So we must be wary of the voice that we listen to. And when I say voice, for those of you who came a little bit later, um, when I say voice, it doesn't necessarily mean an individual. It can be an institution. It can be uh, a school you attend. It can be uh, a body of people that you listen to, a board. A it, it can be a book. It can be a YouTube channel or whatever. Mm. So the only, re the only way we know whether... Uh, the voice test works and whether something is of the spirit is that the word of God must be present in it, mm. which is the water. So there must be some, sometimes somebody won't directly quote a scripture, but the ethos of what they are saying is directly from the word of God. Yes, That's important because oftentimes you do find people in the secular who are secret Christians, if you will, and they ca cannot uh, outright state that you know this is from the book of Romans chapter this this this, this. Yeah. they can't because of obviously uh, they, they, you know now about the hate speech bill and you know all these different things uh, to protect so you cannot directly state and in fact it is good practice to not to actually when you are ministering to somebody ministering in uh, inverted commas you don't have to necessarily state which scripture you are you know unless the person says what scripture did you find this in the Bible? Mm. Sometimes you are that voice to the person. So you must be able to impart something to somebody without showing them that I'm trying to throw religion down your throat, basically. Mm. You know, I am just trying to impart the word of God to you. Okay, I just want to interject. Good evening, guys. Thanks. Thank you all for joining us again. I think uh, this evening's discussion is something that is uh, vitally important to all of us especially in this modern era and this modern age in the context that we all find ourselves living every day. And I think the first question that Kim asked is the most important question, is that whose voice are you listening to? Mm -hmm. I think as young adults, we all need to be responsible for ourselves. We all need to work out our own salvation. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't hide behind our pastor. We cannot hide behind our parents and expect our parents and our pastors to continually be uh, a shield to us, mm -hmm. shielding us from the big bad world. At some point, we have to be able to fend for ourselves and, and discern and identify what is of God and what is not of God. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to fall prey nowadays because 
a lot of people are very cunning and very crafty. Mm-hmm. They will insert themselves into your life. And for example, if you're a, a, a naive church going young man going uh, obedient to your parents and just following the rules and continuing yourself but you never thought of the the other side of the coin and you never thought of the craftiness of people someone can very easily insert themselves into your life and play along with your lifestyle mm. and uh, and go on to with church with you and talk about music worship talk about the word but in still small little seed thoughts in you in in conversation in passing conversation mm-hmm. and if you're naive and you are not discerning enough these small little seed thoughts grow in yes. you and lead you to disbelief even in what you're actually doing mm-hmm. and that is why it is so important with the people that we spend time with mm-hmm. the people that we choose to covenant with the people that we choose to marry mm-hmm. is so important because the person that you marry cannot take you should not be taking you away from church mm-hmm. but the person that you marry is supposed to be exponentially increasing what you become in the body of Christ mm. because it's it's deep crying out to deep it's a help meet for you to serve your purpose in Christ mm. and i was talking to kim earlier and i think like i said personal responsibility uh I don't know if there's anyone here that went to UK Zen but I know when you go to UK Zen uh, you got a whole bunch of courses in whichever degree you're studying that you have to do and the courses are separated into eight credit courses and 16 credit courses and the lecturers will tell you as a rule of thumb if it's a eight credit course you need to spend 8 hours a week on that course and if it's a 16 credit course you need to spend 16 hours a week on that course that's apart from your lectures that's your personal study time and if in the secular you can do that and you can be faithful to that uh how much more important it would will it be to spend time with the word yes. because uh like yesterday pastor salva preached in our church and like he said you don't have to study the word deeply you just have to make the first step of actually opening the bible and reading something mm. and 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 be expectant that the holy spirit will come and minister and impart something to you from the word that you actually read yes. and again that lies with personal responsibility if we allow ourselves to to read the bible read the word at least spend some time every day reading the bible reading the word i'm not saying spend 5 hours a day i'm saying at least spend half an hour 20 minutes read something and pray mm. and by doing that you'll see your spirit uh, growing your spirit being mm. uplif- uplifted and i think like I was saying also people insert themselves in your life and a lot of the times these insertions lead to strife because mm-hmm. the seed thoughts that they sow are based on strife mm-hmm. and strife is what divides the body and you must remember in in most scripture god is coming for a unified body coming for one church even yes. in this even in this portion of scripture that we speaking from with gideon and his mighty men if you continue reading towards end of the scripture it's one loaf one yes. sword which was gideon uh it was one body that attacked was it was gideon the entire army of gideon seen as one man and that's what we need to strive to be like and the association and the company that we keep can either help us in that regard or can hamper us hamper us and disable us to a large extent mm-hmm. and that's why in philippians 1:9 it says let your love abound with knowledge and discernment mm-hmm. with wisdom and discernment and we cannot can, can't only look with our natural eyes but we must also allow ourselves to submit to internal unctions of the holy spirit mm. this is why the company that we keep is so important and the people that we marry and covenant with are so important and i know i jotted down a few examples here of people that only saw with their natural eyes and the number one example is the 10 spies 12 spies went in in the land 10 came back with a report with what their natural eyes saw they didn't believe in the promise of god then Naaman Naaman knew very well that he was following Elisha he knew very well that Elisha got a double portion of Elijah's anointing and if he stood faithful with Elisha he was in line to get even more mm. but he saw something with his natural eyes that pleased him even Achan with the Babylonian garment he left his his own brothers in battle to come back with the spoil of war and hide it in his tent 
he saw something with his natural eyes and it ultimately it ended in his destruction and you know a lot of people talk about a work life balance and i agree with that it's very healthy to have a work life balance i myself live by the motto that i don't live to work i work to live mm-hmm. and i think also we need to have a natural a spiritual natural balance mm. we can't over spiritualize things because we live in the real world but in the same on the same breath we cannot over naturalize things because we are still spiritual beings yes so we need to strike a balance in how we live our lives we cannot only ex- expect to study secular and then when something goes wrong run to god and expect him to be there for you mm. we need to be able to do both at the same time and that's where using your right hand and your left hand comes in you know we need to be ambidextrous people but also we need to support each other we need to let our love abound with the discernment we need to discern that when our brother is in pain or our brother is in stress or in discomfort that we can stand there and be a pillar of support to him and lend a helping hand when we when we, when we ought to we can't just look the other way and expect everything to be hunky dory mm. I just want to add to what Quinn said about you know your your association is vital for your prosperity because sometimes um the people that you associate with they can be the voice of God to you that's a good association yes where they can be a vehicle for God to work in your life you know they can direct you to God to your purpose that's the uh, that's ultimately the relationships you want to have but on the other hand sometimes you could be in relationships with people who are not listening to any voice of god to a uh, sorry to uh, the voice of god they they are listening to other voices like they could be listening to a um a a, a guru or a brahman or they could be consulting uh mediums trance. you know they could be consulting a trance they could be doing all these things reading the stars and you wouldn't sometimes guys news flash sometimes you won't even know sometimes you'll be friends with somebody for so many years and you wouldn't know this about them because for them there's nothing wrong with it it's a norm yeah it's a norm until one day when you are so deep in this relationship with this person as a friend or boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever and then you discover and then you know you feel so betrayed and that's why you must go through your friend list with a self and you must make sure that the people that you associate with spend time with who you allow into your inner circle who you allow into your mind because ultimately the people that you spend time with they become a voice to you as well yes they become a voice in your head like you know if you do something and you'll say oh i know what he or she will say mm. if i do this like why are you even saying that because they became a voice to you mm. so the bible says blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly and i just actually t- uh, told that to josiah a few hours an hour or so ago because he actually came home and he told us something that this little girl uh, was going around saying uh, in school she had made some kind of a rhyme about emotional damage yeah, your dad is a cabbage and your mom is savage something like that it sounds absolutely ridiculous but this is what 8 year olds and 9 year olds are talking about emotional damage and you know that angered me so much because i said you know how can children be talking about things like this and you expect them to be speaking about good and happy things but here goes a child uh and she's teaching everybody this rhyme of hers and children are innocent and they just go around saying this yeah. and repeating it and the bible says that death and life is in the power of the tongue your confession is so important and you are confessing these emotional damage upon yourself which is wrong mm. so obviously do not be friends with characters like that because they are teaching you about how to be emotionally damaged so but guys you know, like okay give me that's one example right yeah. but i want to pose a question to you guys now i think also we must identify and we must realize that there is nothing that is innocent yes uh you, you you know a lot of people make this comment innocence of a child and innocently did this and innocently did that there is nothing that is innocent and i think the company that we keep and the associations that we keep are our responsibility and the voices that we lie uh, we allow in our head is also our responsibility mm. so i'd like to pose a question to to you guys and some of you guys are still in school some of you are in university 
reading horoscopes is it an innocent thing to do because a lot of people will say oh it's just an innocent thing it's in the, yeah, it's it's in the newspaper i'm just reading this thing because eventually you become addicted to oh what does it say i'm going to what's going to happen to me you know what's going to happen to me now like you know yeah instead of reading the word of god that tells and, you what's going to happen to you <laughs> exactly uh, any comments guys any opinions any comments anything you want to add even a question something that's confusing you or perplexing you joe go for it how's it guys hope you are well so uh, i've got a, pers- a perspective of what you guys just spoke about right so this is this is what i teach uh, within our church and our model of church and uh, even this is how i build our church and i build my life as well so if you look at the word of god you look at moses uh, when god said to moses you know i want you to lead the people moses first goes and he gets a 70 right he finds the 70 elders which he appoints that is the inner circle even though he was going to lead over 2 million people out of the nation of out of Egypt which was the nation of Israel which was 2 million people there was a 70 so in each one of our lives there has to be two sectors right and two divide, defining sectors which is the inner circle and the outer circle you look at Jesus and in his day he would first find the 12 and then the 12 would lead to 70 again and uh, that 70 would then spread the gospel out and then it will go into thousands and millions and eventually uh, of uh, of from there you even look at david and you see that david first the, the 300 came to him 300 men were ambidextrous and then the army grew you know so if you look at it in, in multiple accounts you even look at noah you find that with noah it starts with eight people again the inner circle and then it spreads out so we find that uh, throughout the word of god that uh, you know they must be there is there are two models where there's an inner circle and outer circle so i think in our lives as well this is what i do and this is how i build my life just to have some sort of control with it over it uh, you must have two types of circles right so there's a few things that you can use to define uh, how people fit in especially since since we're talking about uh, people the first thing is you need to look at the value system right um you would see that in the in the model of moses the 70 men were men of stature of uh, of eldership they were men would with influence they would they were men who carried a similar vision and agreement to moses so the first value system is that when you have an inner circle and outer circle the inner circle are always the people who have the same values and beliefs as you right so in this case in our case it will be abc family or anybody uh, who who is concurrent with the abc uh, or apostolic and in the outer circle uh, is a mix of believers unbelievers people with other doctrines uh friends business associates whatever it is but uh, the inner circle fo- forms a foundation for the outer circle to build the outer circle so what happens with many people is that we tend to build the outer circle and then build the inner circle upon it so what happens is in that case it all gets blurred and soon enough we've got a whole lot of people that we associate with but none of them really add value to our life So I think it's important that we build the inner circle first and one of the key things is you evaluate your friend list you evaluate your contact list those who are connected to you and um, you implement the fact that uh, who is actually adding value to my life uh, on a social level on a spiritual level and so forth that's one of the things the next thing is you have to associate your, yourself with people who value you so you would find that these 70 elders that uh, Moses would uh, would appoint none of them at any appointed time wanted to overtake Moses and say that they are now hearing from God but 
they 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 stuck to the hierarchy of Moses being the one who was hearing at the time. So we must always associate the inner circle to people who value us as much as we value them. And see, many a time, uh, especially in society today, we always want to seek the approval of others. So we always succumb uh, to their ways, their wishes, and whatever they want to do or say. But if you look at the model of Moses now in the 70s, you would see that uh, these people valued Moses as much as he valued them as elders. And this is important to have in your inner circle because in the outer circle, you'll have people who speak bad about you, people who who, who, who slander you, people who have mood swings, people who have different doctrines from you, people who have different cultural understandings, people who have a different religion, but still, you can still have a friendship with them. Just that, don't have, don't choose it as a support system or a foundation uh, to build on. So yeah, guys, let's just do two points that I wanted to share on the inner circle or outer circle. And uh, this is something that, well, it's my perspective that that I look at uh, in terms of uh, life, and uh, I've seen it working. You know, wonders. Uh, you know, in terms of in terms of in terms of leading a life less of problems because like this you know how to categorize people and things and it makes things uh, less messy so thank you guys god bless thank you joe that was some uh, wonderful points that you gave us there and i think the issue of boundary lines is what was also mm. highlighted um i think in our culture we because of indian culture we tend to drop boundary lines yeah. because we feel like, you know, everyone's supposed to be in my business and the entire family, like, you know how people say it takes a village to raise a child, that kind of scenario. But that's not the biblical way of doing things because like the Bible says, that parents train up a child in the ways of the Lord. Yes. That's one example. And then it says, husbands, leave your uh, mother and father mm. and cling to your wife. Cling to your wife. So you can see how all these scriptures go against Indian culture per se. I'm not hating on Indian culture, but I'm trying to explain to you how, because we are Indian, we can speak about Indian culture. There are other cultures that also do things like this. Now, boundary lines are important because, like Joe mentioned, there's an inner circle and an outer circle. And you must establish for yourself who you have in your inner circle and who you have in your outer circle. And you have the power to differentiate between those two. And that is your right, because no one can tell you how, how you can't put me in your inner <laughs> circle. You know, that's not for the, that person to say or even to know. Yeah, that's for you, I, for your sanity. Yeah, I think uh, don't tell anybody yeah. in the inner circle. Exactly. Outer circle, so that's you're asking for problems. That's something that is for you. For, it's your prerogative. And I think <clears> we must become skilled at defining boundary lines in your life, because there are some things, like Joe mentioned, for your sanity and so things don't get messy. Uh, you must keep certain things in certain places. Uh, also as a sign of respect. Because like you cannot uh, basically have um, like your, your grandparents around, if your grandparents are alive, or your parents, and then all your young friends from church. And then like it even though everyone knows the same word, they know the same culture kind of, but I'm giving you an example that you can relate to. But sometimes the company might not keep, yes. for instance, because it's uh, you know a difference of opinion for certain things and you're just going to create a problem for nothing. So in that scenario now, what we are trying to say is you would have those two uh, groups of people separately over to your house, for instance. Yes. And that's not a saying, oh, you're being so bad because you never invited so and so while this, that's not that. You know, my father recently spoke about how there's a lot of clicks and the importance of clicks. And I do agree that sometimes you need a click for your own sanity, uh, a, a niche, a group of people that get you, that you get, that you'll have the same things in common, that you'll have the same things in common. Uh, you're like interested in and that would be kind of in your inner circle of relationships and then you would have other people that you fellowship with but you are not as close to and that would be your outer circle yes so anyone else has anything to add
Come, guys, I'm sure you all have clicks. Okay, if there's nobody else who wants to add uh, anything. All right, I think we'll leave it there, guys. Okay, we've got a question here from Jeremiah. Do people tend to mix up their circles? So I do think that people do mix up their circles. That's my opinion. Uh, anyone else can freely uh, can, can comment on this question also. Uh, I think in different phases of your life, different things appeal to you. For instance, you might hang out with a certain group of people who like a certain 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 things that find they find amusing or that they enjoy. And then as you mature, you might not get on with those people as much, even though you'll remain as friends, but you might like other things. And it's important to find people that are like-minded. So you you it's it's good for your health. It's good for your mental well-being. But I do think that people tend to mix up their circles because at the same time, there are there's there's something called uh, the chameleon person, who it's a person who tends to get on with everybody and changes their skin mm. when they go by everybody. And I think somebody like that you have to be careful for, obviously, because they're not being honest with who they really are. But there are instances where you tend to mix up circles, Jeremiah. And you know what? It's fine if that happens because, like, for instance, if you consider the fact that when you were in school, in primary school, sometimes the, the best friend that you had in primary school is not your best friend anymore in, in, in high school or in university because you mm. grew apart mm. or you, you uh, moved to a new city or you moved to a new school and that person didn't follow, follow with. Uh, so anyone else has anything to add? Even if you want to type out your question in the chat. Okay, guys. If there's nothing, then we're going to end the meeting there tonight. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for your contributions. And I hope that uh, you all got some homework to do now. You got some work to do. Develop your circles. Figure out what's what. Figure out who is the voice in your life. Good night, guys. Thank you.